Issue number one is I want to ask a few questions. The uh, question was asked here, but I'm vaguely interested in this. Who, who in your school, put your hand up, and maybe just you have to choose one person per, per school, put your hand up if you have a, nom, like a, a maths coordinator at the school. Put your hand up. Oh, well, well, like if you're gonna, well, uh, I probably should say if you anticipate having a maths coordinator next year, like there'll be someone who'll be, we'll be able to get their name. Okay, put your hand up if you also have a different person who's the numeracy coordinator. Next year. All right, so everyone will have a, a separate person from maths. Yeah. Okay. So, well, let me ask the question this way. For, for the schools that will have a numeracy coordinator next year, that's different from the maths coordinator, which schools is that different from this year? Meaning you don't have one this year, but you're going to have one next year. Hands up. Oh, okay, so that, that's... And that's because you don't have one this year, but you will have one next year. Okay. Um, the, for the maths coordinator at your school... Hands up if they get, um, let's say, one hour reduction in their teaching for maths. I'm going to have to keep going up in numbers. One hour or less reduction in teaching. Two hours or less reduction in teaching. That looks like three hours or less reduction in teaching. Four hours or less. I say more than three hours. Oh, okay. Um, so, but, but take a note of that. Um, I, I, most hands went up with two. Some, some were between one and two, and some were, and there was some, some were more than three. Um, so that was it. Hands up the people who get for the numeracy coordinator this year, and you can put your hand up if you guess, you're going to guess for next year. We'll get a one-hour reduction in teaching, one or less for numeracy coordinator. One or less. There's a few, there's two or three. Uh, two or uh, two, between one and two. There's another one. Between two and three for numeracy. More than three. Oh, you don't know. Okay. Oh, this, this you, get, you get more than three? Someone. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's interesting. There's actually really quite a range of... Uh, to, do, who would... Put your hand up if either, either one of the numeracy or... or Mathematics coordinators get as well as that a money allowance. So that that's if you like, that's sort of like policy. Everyone does, is it? You have to be a leading teacher to get the money, or if you're not a leading teacher, you get the money. All right. All right. Okay. So it's. So, yeah. So if you're doing something important like the bike racks or something, then you get a time out. Okay. All right, okay. Yeah, no, I'm guessing, because there's really quite a range there, you know, that I would have thought that's um, in what presents. So does that give you... You didn't want to ask another question? I want to just talk about something else a little bit. It came out of a conversation we had with Christina. I actually um, first became aware of Barack Obama in 2004 when he spoke at the Democrat convention in the US and his talk then was about education because he was saying and I can remember the words he said he wanted to address the slander that a black kid with a book is acting white he said those words and the reason being and Will Smith the actor said he used to take his books to school in a pizza box because he just didn't want, you know, he's a black American, black actor, he didn't want the other kids to see that he took a book home. Because the culture of, oh, if you're taking a book home, you must be some sort of weird person. And he, is it, that was his way of overcoming it. The reason I say that is because that thing that we say, oh, well, they, they were talking about the black American culture, it's a very real thing in our schools. It's very real. This, this sense in which kids underperform in order to, to do it. I was talking once to some group of teachers about this, and one of the teachers, it was at the school staff meeting, and one of the teachers said that, he said, one minute ago, 
I actually collected the essays from, from the kids that was a report of something and, and one of the kids came up and gave me an envelope and said, this is my real essay. He'd actually written a lousy essay to hand it in with the others and a good essay that he gave secretly to the teacher because he was so conscious of this, this, um, this negative peer influence that uh, he wanted to overcome that. Now, to me, this is a really big problem that schools have to address. I, I think I might have told you this story, but I were, one of the students I'm supervising in a PhD was working really intensely with these a small number of kids. And there was a kid who was at one school, and it was a government school, and just mucked around. Like, she watched him in class, she talked to him, she talked to him, and all the kid did was muck around. When you spoke to the kid, the kid really wanted to achieve at school and really wanted to keep his parents happy and had aspirations for the future and knew what he wanted to have a family when he was 25 and knew he wanted to be, you know, I forget the job, but it was actually a reasonable job, you know, like as an accountant or something. He knew, but he still never did a minute's work in school. To them. Now, eventually there was an incident which I won't bother going into, but the kid moved to a different school. And this was actually a Catholic school. And the kid worked every single minute that he was observed, the same kid. And it was just the culture of that, the kid going from that, the school where the culture of the kids was don't work, and he didn't have, you know, if you like, enough personal resources to overcome it. So he was sort of, in a sense, repressed by that culture. He moved to a different school where the culture was, well, at least you sit there quietly and listen. And that was enough for him. He could become a worker then and study. And to me, you know, in a sense, that's part of trying to improve the school. That's part of trying to solve this problem, is how do we get the kids to move from, you know, criticising someone who works, you know, having this negative, this, this you know, negative peer pressure, and so that the, um, to do that, and then so that the kids will actually engage. Because you can't learn maths unless you're prepared to have a go. You can't learn maths without trying. And so they have to try. And it's not just, you know, sure we have a job to try and get the kids engaged and to make them that's interesting. That's our job. But their job is to come along and try. And we've got to find ways to make that work. And I, I just, it just came out of that discussion. I think it's a really important point I want to stress. Cause I, I, and I also want to stress that I'm not just talking about maths in this program. And I'm not just talking about teacher learning and teacher development. I'm talking about how can we make the schools better. It's just our focus is... Well, if we make the maths teaching better, along with working on a few other things, well, maybe we can t change things around a bit. We're going to go back to that issue, that race to 5x plus 5y thing. Um, and because we're going to move a little bit faster to, oh, to do that thing. Whoops. Um, I, I will to do. Um, I'd actually said, sorry, I know what I want to do. Okay, we played this game and I asked you to talk about, okay, how much, so we're, gonna, we're just thinking about the management of this. It's a perfectly reasonable game to play. In fact, you can play it with kids. The very first experience they have in algebra might be this. You know, you don't have to, you know, in a sense, it can teach important stuff. But okay, we've got to think about things. To, let's focus first on how we might help kids would, would find this difficult. So who's got some suggestions? So, so we might have some count, X counters and some Y counters. So, so you're going to put down an X counter or a Y counter or an X and a Y counter. And, and you might even have even a little baseboard that's got five X's and five Y's. Coloured, sorry? Yeah, covered. Yeah, you put them on. It's sort of, yeah, as, as you put them on. So it's actually a way of playing the game. It just gives the kids... It's, it's, if you like, a perfect example of what I'm talking about. The kid's still playing the same game. But they're just giving them prompt that they can they can actually help help them to do it. Okay, what's another suggestion that you might have? 